I would like to thank the organization committee for, for being invited to this forum. For my talk, I decided to choose most interesting cases which happened in our institution within uh, the recent years. I do hope that colleagues will take part in discussing these clinical cases before I actually uh, say the final diagnosis, because uh, within several weeks before conference, I uh, sent the uh, radiological images as well as the microscopic views of these cases to the organization committee. So, the first clinical case is 77 years uh, female. The patient represented with left shoulder soft tissue mass, which has grown gradually during the last uh, four months. And uh, what is also very important to say, she had no connection to the adjacent bone structures. This image, this is a coronal, a coronal view. You can see very well delineated mass which uh, is accompanied with an edema of adjacent uh, tissue. And after introduction of gondolinium, the, there is also a contrast of the central necrosis uh, zone and uh, very delicate small calcificates. We performed a resection microscopically. Microscopically, you can see the fibromuscular tissue with cystic uh, formations inside with certain uh, fragments. Uh, and, uh, the weight is almost 50 grams, and it's uh, 60 to 60, uh, 6 to 6 centimeters. The cystic cavities were filled with roundish, uh, with, excuse me, brownish, uh, yellowish um, uh, fluid. Dr. Schwartz, just to start discussion, we can make a comment from the um, side of the clinic. For me, as a surgeon, the uh, patient who comes with such images, I suppose that I will uh, be puzzled because what we can see can be absolutely anything for now by MRI. When we see mac macroscopic view, it actually brings me further to the deadline, to the uh, dead end. Because for me, for a surgeon, it's something like a pseudo tumor macroscopic view of a pseudo tumor, but it would be very interesting to see morphology and discuss it with morphologists before you give us the diagnosis. We know that Irina Vladislavovna is also with us and it will be very interesting to know her viewpoint. So Dr. Schwartz, will you continue? Yes, I will now describe all the microscopic findings I don't know how uh, clearly you can see how clearly you can see the microscopic view. Uh, you can see soft tissue malformation with multiple cysts which are filled with uh, hemorrhagic uh, fluid and calcinates and ossificates. All this picture is, is something that reflects the subdivided pattern of this neoplasm. And also there is internal area, which is a fibroblast-like spindle cells with a very cytologically blunt 
without any ATPL. Here we can see multinucleotide giant cells. I, uh, at the, this picture with uh, magnification, you can see them clearly. And the background of inflammatory cells is definitely them. Uh, altogether, it uh, shows uh, like an aneurysm, a um, bone cyst. Now, the middle portion, you can see here proliferating spindle cells and also a formation of the pseudo membrane, which is constructed from the ripening bone tissue, which is surrounded with osteoblasts. It's osteoblast rimmed. The stroma is mixoid of mixoid type. It's um, spongy, and uh, here you can see the formation of new new bone formation with prominent osteoblastic remaining. So, what are your options for diagnosis? Dr. Schwartz, hello. I suppose that in this situation, taking into account the clinical and morphological situation, I would suppose that this is an aneurysm of a bone cyst in soft tissue, which is rare, but nonetheless such cases are well described because we have quite typical zone morphology. We have cysts um, filled with hemorrhagic fluid and also multinuclear of um, giant cells. I would say this would be my diagnosis. So, Irina, what do I say? Yeah, it's absolutely excellent diagnosis. Irina, are you with us? Yes, yes. I'm here. Think about the soft tissue cyst. Uh, and uh, we can, uh, there are not that many of such patients. Everything is within the diagnosis, uh, maybe except for perichondral or maybe ossificates, inchondral ossification is also possible, though so, so the cartilage, uh, maybe it is also, uh, if it's the diagnosis, I do agree with Artyom, maybe aneurysmal soft tissue, uh, aneurysmal cyst, thanks a lot, uh, Irina, and we have Professor Cavello uh, with us. Uh, osseous uh, proliferation uh, with uh, particular structure, maybe a um, new city ossificant, something like this, you know, uh, it's in the differential diagnosis, of course. All the, uh, the previous, uh, moreover, uh, ossificant myositis. То есть вы согласны с предложенными вариантами и добавляете еще uh, варианты. So you agree with the variants, uh, you, uh, you agree with previous variants, and you add some ossifying myositis. Yeah. Thanks a lot for your proper interpretation. Our uh, diagnosis uh, uh, message is as if it has uh, a lack of, uh, of bones. Here you can see the reference in the one. Uh, so our diagnosis specific and slight soft tissue and original bone cyst. It's and as you can see, last year uh, we have absolutely similar morphology. It's a very rare, very rare um, soft tissue mass. Uh, and in our practice, it's looked to be as a second case in let's say. 10 years, something. So, any more questions? Yes, indeed. It's a very interesting uh, observation, very interesting case. And we are always interested with uh, 
patient history uh, there was a link to trauma especially when we talk about uh, um, such, such process and I would like to thank you separately for a great morphological presentation of all diagnostic clues which we can in this case use for proper uh, diagnosis yeah I'll try to do my best and if you're good with math, I cannot calculate. You, you said the second case in 10 years. Uh, in my experience, experience, I don't remember more than three in 40 years. So what is the percentage here? It's a minimal percent. It's a minimal percent. So it's an extremely rare pathology. We had a slick just one such case in the past. Can we switch to the next one? Yes, the second case, it's a similar location. It is also uh, upper great upper shoulder mass in a 19-year-old female. We can see at uh, CT imaging large parenchymatous mass where you see a very coarse, heavy calcifications, and uh, the sagittal view, uh, the sagittal X-ray imaging, you can see the same. You can see those uh, uh, calcifications after after uh, gadolinium contrasting. We can contrast the central part of necrosis, and the same case you can see uh, calcificates uh, with a very well limited, very clear mass. Morphologically, you see some fat tissue with uh, the mass of uh, 12 by 16 by 8 centimeters partially covered by skin and uh, partially uh, calcinated mass so on microscopy we can see contrasting several patterns of the tumor we see a hyper and hypocellular uh, uh, sections of or pieces, which mostly consists of uh, round cells with uh, large, uh, with high uh, nuclear cytoplasma ratio and atypical nuclei. The focally, we can see some mixed alterations multiple metaplastic uh, ossifications but we saw no convincing data for uh, osteoids metaplastic uh, calcifications and ossifications are surrounded by osteoclasts as you can see it here and uh, the less uh, uh, calcified or ossified uh, uh, areas or sections we can see cells with atypical nuclei uh, very aggressive cytological pattern immunohistochemistry we see no plastic cells positive for sad B2 flea one and we considered it as a non-specific pattern and CDK4 and uh, quite white panel of markers was uh, tested all markers were negative I'm talking only about positive markers well what else we tested for? MDM2, SOX10, MUC4, S100, CD34, CD99, MNF116, Desmin, TLE1, and SMA. Everything was negative. KI67 was positive up to 25%. 
we did cytogenetics on MDM2 chop first. Uh, Ewing LCI translocation X18 and CIC gene. Uh, everything was negative. And uh, And and uh, uh, we and we sent this case to Professor Fletcher, uh, to Professor Fletcher, uh, Fletcher. Uh, so, uh, so dear colleagues, uh, uh, it was uh, our uh, lifesaver. But before we say his uh, diagnosis, what you think is here? Uh, here. I would think about non-differentiated round cell sarcoma, because in this case we can see non-typical immunophenotype, uh, round cell morphology, and with no confirmed uh, genetic uh, specific rearrangements, I would consider it as non-differentiated round cell sarcoma, which, uh, as I mentioned in my talk, this nosology is still there, it still exists in classifications. And what do you think about calcifications and intensifications? Mature bone, no osteoids we are found. Well, maybe it's a reactive bone formation because in this case, naturally, differential diagnosis uh, should be done with uh, maybe with osteosarcoma, but uh, but out of uh, positive signs. It's uh, so is mm, so is uh, sad B2 positive, but sad B2 could be seen in a large number of cases. Yes, yeah, uh, regretfully, it's highly non-specific marker. Regretfully, well, his diagnosis was unclassified round cell sarcoma with metaplastic calcifications. This was uh, this was such a weird diagnosis uh, for this weird mass. What was the patient history? Nothing, nothing specific. 19 year old girl. What we know about her? Just a second. Maybe there was some any trauma when this uh, mass appeared. Well, actually, I don't believe strongly into the connection of uh, malignant uh, masses, uh, bone masses, uh, with trauma, it was mostly it's a coincidence. Yes, I don't believe that also, but we need to know her history. It's a question to clinicians, yes. That's, that's, that's what I was uh, given uh, by the clinicians, that's it. Thank you. So that was such a nice case. And if we look at the microscopic uh, Specimen, I'd like to say one thing. You said it, that it looks like a fat tissue, and I do not agree with that. It looks exactly as a sarcoma like tissue. It was surrounded by fat tissue. Maybe I didn't uh, mention it uh, quite clearly. If you show me the picture, it's the first thing. It's this malignant tissue, skin, you see. And what uh, maybe. Uh, we do not know about something, and maybe geneticians just didn't pay attention to that. But look here, it's highly heterogeneous. You see here white pieces, uh, you see some additional nodular of more brownish type. Microscopically, it was very heterogeneous uh, uh, structure. And then it is a bone formation, it's a rib, young woman, so there could be some trauma. Well, first, I do not know, I cannot say anything about that, but in any case, this bone, as you can see, macro-microscopically, it was a absolutely regular metaplastic classification. I wouldn't say metaplastic, but absolutely regular, normal, non-neoplastic bone formation. And what we see, sad B2 marker, it works nicely for benign processes. Uh, yes, but this is a marker of osteoformation, but in those cells, 
you don't see any signs of bone formation and so B2 it in these cells it was positive it's a very nice case yes I very unclear it's unclear okay so thank you next case uh, 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 did you did you rule out uh, a nocifying fibromyxoid uh, tumor malignant of course it doesn't look like uh, fibromyxoid. It doesn't look like this. But uh, we did FUS, CHOP, and MDR. They all were negative. Meaning it's not in that group, I suppose. Uh, and MUC4. Thank you. The next case. 25 year old woman. Uh, in her history, she has Lifrau Mani syndrome with uh, right, uh, right cuff soft tissue mass. As you can see, coronal T2 image with uh, with a whole body MRI which is done as a as a part of her follow-up for Lefraumani syndrome they found this mess ultrasound showed uh, some soft tissue parenchymatic uh, mass Regretfully, I don't see her microscopy uh, specimen. I mean, it's image, but we've got a fragment of skin with uh, subcutaneous antifold tissue, uh, weight 54 grams, uh, size of uh, 9 by 4 by 4 centimeters, uh, on cut, soft brown gray relatively well uh, circum circumscribed, cir uh, circumscribed uh, mass and here you can see mixoid uh, neoplasia well uh, uh, limited well uh, circumscribed, uh, circumscribed. Uh, solitary cells flowing in relatively hypocellular mixoid stroma and those cells uh, are hyperchromatic, uh, highly atypical, uh, and with nuclei of unusual shape. We did FUS, CHOP, and MDM2, and all uh, three markers were found to be negative. So, your diagnosis. In this case, I would assume new nosology which appeared in WHO classification mixoid pleomorphic uh, liposarcoma which actually uh, appeared due to absence of typical for mixoid liposarcoma uh, genital rearrangement typical for mixoid liposarcomas it's absolutely proper diagnosis yeah we had similar case actually so mixoid pleomorphic uh, liposarcoma uh, high grade associated with Lefromani syndrome uh, which actually was uh, uh, a, a, a in the uh, latest WHO classification as a, a separate group of sarcomas. It's you're absolutely right. Um, mixed amorphic sarcoma is a very rare sarcoma uh, happening in Lefromani syndrome patients. In autosomal dominant disorder with multi, uh, caused by multiple germline mutations, and uh, fish studies uh, shown to be uh, typically negative for all three liposarcoma markers uh, MDM2, CHOP, and FUS. Well, quite recently, there have been relatively recently, there have been published an article. 2017 was absolutely similar uh, 
a pattern and uh, similar and similar genetic uh, alterations. Questions? Are there any comments from our colleagues? Irina, Dr. Cavallo, any comments? I think that uh, I do agree completely with uh, Artem in his diagnosis. It's quite nice. Dr. Cavallo, if you don't have any comments, then let's switch to the last case. So to continue. So the last case, 14-year-old uh, boy. So the last case, 14-year-old boy uh, presented with uh, soft tissue mass in his uh, left uh, palmar part. On macroscopy, this is, there, is a, there was a mess, 1.5 by 1 by 1 centimeter, quite hard, uh, quite dense, white yellowish uh, coloration. We, uh, no additional imaging was done except for regular X-ray, which showed very delicate, uh, very small, tiny subcutaneous calcifications in that area. And, uh, and the surgeons who uh, were working on uh, hand surgery, they didn't pay attention to that uh, and did surgery without additional imaging. Regretfully, it also happens in our hospitals. What we can see at microscopy? Well defined but non encapsulate mesenchymal lesion with remnants of mature adipose tissue at its periphery. And what's interesting, what you should uh, what attracts attention, it's very numerous, coarse, heavy calcifications surrounded by uh, multinucleated giant cells. And as you can see here, at, uh, at larger magnification, a stroma composed of uh, uh, fibroblast-like uh, spindle cells. Ki67 is moderately positive. All other markers negative. Uh, all other markers naturally are negative. And uh, what can you suggest as a diagnosis? Well, in this case, when I analyzed it, I assumed tenosynovial giant cell tumor. I think it should be included into the differential diagnosis. But morphology, of course, is different. But this case uh, caused uh, lots of issues, so to say. Uh, compared to other um, cases, so maybe uh, uh, Irina or Dr. Cavallo, maybe you can help with diagnosis. Well, actually, I'm confused a bit with those calcinates. Uh, mm. uh, not a good uh, age, not a good place for such tumor. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, of course. A funny typo. Открывайте занавес, Dr. Schwartz. Let's open, uh, uh, let's open the stage, so let's open the secret, Dr. Schwartz. And by the way, there was no link to trauma, and no trauma was present. Despite of uh, quite active age of uh, 14 years, our diagnosis, calcifying juvenile pneumorotic fibroma. If, uh, and uh, it's very rare and very clear, uh, a very distinctive fibrous lesion of young age, which was originally described uh, uh, by Kisby in 1953. Uh, two to one male predominance, mainly young, uh, maybe children and young adults. 
80% distal extremities, 20% uh, proximal extremities. Currently, everything fits the diagnosis. So then, there is a trend to local uh, recurrence in the period of up to 20 years. Malignant transformation uh, is, uh, has not been proven and uh, metastasis have never been documented. So this is our diagnosis.